I see people out of my way. Always oh, blocking your way? Yeah. You want daddy to get it so he can get it higher? Yeah. Read what are our cow's names? Put to the new line half point. Good job, Bob. Her cow's names? Patula Lula is half height. Good job, Bob. All right, Patula Lula and half pint finally made it. They're really cute, um, but uh, they're a little skittish right now. They're still getting used to us. You got some hay set out for them. And uh, a nice setup with her water trough and a, a couple snack feeders uh, to give them a little grain here and there to get them used to that. Yeah. <laughs> They're pretty cute. The boys are pretty happy with them. Uh, but, uh, just wanted to share with you guys. And uh, we're going to keep them in the barn and feed them hay just for a little while. These are, where'd they go? There we go. These are uh, two Jersey calves. Uh, so they're for um, our milk production uh, in the future, pretty far off future. And um, so I just want to domesticate them as much as I can. And uh, so we're going to keep them in the, the, uh, in the barn for a while and get them real used to us. Um, cause I, I, I work in the barn quite a bit in the evenings. So uh, that'll give us a lot of time together to, for them to get to know me, to get to know the boys, get to know the dog and, um, just to, to domesticate, domesticate them a little better. Um, my buddy Tyler Thompson sold these to us and uh, I think they're four and six months and they're A2, A2, uh, proteins in their milk or their genetic line is. So. That's kind of what we're after for our own use. And um, jerseys I've just have heard have real good cream, cream separation, real tasty milk. And uh, and our long long term plan is to to AI them to, to um, and when they calf, uh, depending on what breed we AI with, we're still researching a lot. Um, some of those will end up being our beef production, and that'll little. Uh, keep Patula Lula and uh, in half pint um, in milk. So, yeah, just want to share with you guys. Uh, this is real exciting for me. Uh, it's something I, I've wanted for a, a pretty large part of my life. Uh, I used to uh, work in MacArthur. I, I'm traditionally a physical therapist assistant, and. Uh, there's a lady I would work on her farm. She was in her late 70s, early to mid 70s. I don't, I don't know, in her 70s. And, um, and she needed help around the farm and I'd go after work and, uh, and I'd milk some of her cows and, and get, get a lot of the milk. And um, even though I've always been really intrigued by farming, really drawn to it, uh, that was a phase of my life. I really fell in love with it. and. Um, and having access to raw milk and then having the abundance of milk to learn how to make yogurt and different cheeses. And um, so uh, real exciting uh, for me. And and uh, just wanted to share it with you guys. So got a lot of work in the barn to do, as you can see, lots of chicken tractor building going on. Actually, chicken tractor fixing. But All right. Have a good one, guys. Bye. Thank you. I made them a new paddock tonight, a lot bigger one. Uh, they're still sleeping in the barn, but they got a lot more space now um, to get some grass and kind of pick out some of their favorite stuff. I plan on eventually mob grazing, so a little bit tighter paddocks with more often moves, but uh, for right now, until the grass starts growing, I'm just gonna throw some hay out here and then make it so they can kind of select some of their favorite stuff for the next week or two and then switch paddocks but they're doing really good 
they are minding the electric fence real well. They both got shocked once and uh, seem to res be respecting it well. I ran double strands so the pigs can't get in. I got those cooney coonies that don't root up as much, but um, I'm kind of okay with them not being in the barn for now and being pigs out here. Um, even though they're not rooting up as much, when I give them some electric fence space, um, just the weight of them with how wet it's been, it's kind of been not doing some favors to uh, the soil that um, that I want done with my, my pasture. So I'm kind of turning them loose on a bigger square footage for that reason. Um, even though they're not rooting, just the weight of them, I don't want them traveling the same paths um, all the time. But uh, things are getting good, are going good, and uh, the cows are doing good. And, um, I, I loved chickens when I first started raising them and kind of have that same feeling about cattle. I just, it feels right, especially dairy cows. I like having two of them and um, the way they're going to give a protein source to the rest of the farm someday. Um, dairy cattle, they tend to be like, you know, if you read old homesteader books, they're the, they are the central part of uh, the dairy farm or of the farm because you know, back before soy, grain's not high in protein. Um, but if a Jersey can give four to six gallons of milk a day and you're milking two, um, that's a lot of extra protein that can go to the chickens and um, go to the pigs to supplement their diet uh, and keep everybody healthy. And, you know, cows have the amazing ability to turn sunlight and they, well, well the sun turns uh, grass. All right, well, let me reword this. <laughs> Uh, the sun turns, um, you know, the grass, sun makes grass. There we go. The sun makes grass and the cows eat the grass and then the cows can create beef and, and, uh, and milk and that can feed the rest of the farm without a lot of inputs. So there's something really special about the homestead and the dairy cow. And that's why it was such a quick decision for me because it's, um, they're, they're one of the main life givers to, of the farm.